G'day and welcome back to the channel. Interesting stuff is happening in the skies over our heads. Now most people are familiar with the GPS system, the Global Positioning System that was set up by the USA I think in the 1980s. Uh, a constellation of satellites surround the planet and by beaming signals down to Earth we can locate our position within just a meter or so, sometimes less, uh, by looking at the different timing of the signals from different satellites in different positions. Simple maths, triangulation, it's really great stuff. Um, and we've been using that system for decades now, but other countries have kind of got in on the act. We have Russia has its uh, GLONASS system, which is like Russian GPS, and the European space people have put up their version, which is called Galileo. And uh, each of these systems has a whole lot of satellites orbiting around the Earth, and you know, as I say, by triangulation, you can locate your position. Now, some of the cheap GPS units, you know, for, for 10 bucks, you can buy a GPS that's multi system. It'll work with the US GPS system and the Russian GLONASS system, and the, some of them work with Galileo. So, by having three different systems, the error rate is significantly reduced, and you, your accuracies are down to like almost millimeter levels now. It's amazing stuff. So why have these countries created three different systems? Well obviously there's a strategic military advantage to running your own GPS system. Back in the 1980s, or in the 1990s, when the American GPS system was launched, they introduced something called dithering. Now dithering just means adding an error to the signal. And the, the idea being that well, the, the Americans didn't want the GPS system to be too accurate because enemies could use it for targeting of missile systems and so forth. So they added an error signal which meant that the, the, the resolution was you know maybe three, four, five, maybe sometimes ten meters depending on where you were in the world at the time of day and how many satellites you could see. So the Americans and I suspect the Russians and the Europeans have the ability to turn off and on the, the or change the accuracy of their systems. Now if you were at war with the USA obviously you're going to get a pretty crappy si signal because when they add this dithering they also provide a facility with the military GPS to uh, disable the dithering. So basically it will filter out all that extra error information so that what it means is the Americans with their own GPS would have ultra precision targeting, but anyone else trying to use the GPS system made by America would have crap targeting. So they built that in. They turned that off um, early this century because it was no longer needed. There was no, they didn't see the need to have that, you know, ultra um, extra error added. Uh, because they didn't have any enemies that were going to fire missiles at them, hopefully. But uh, obviously Europe has decided they want to go it alone. They want to have their own ability to, to not be reliant on the American system. And Russia, well, obviously they don't want to be reliant on the Americans either. So we've got these three, and I think the Chinese have got a system up now too. I, don't, I have to look it up. But I, anyway, the three main systems that are out there telling us exactly where you are. If you've got a GPS-enabled phone um, or, a, or a drone. That's right, drones rely on GPS for the flight controller to return to home so you can see where you are on a map, all these things. GPS signals are essential for the reliable and safe operation of many, many drones. Military drones, commercial drones, store-bought recreational drones all use GPS. So if GPS didn't work, we'd be in trouble. And guess what? Guess what? The European system's fallen on its face. It's not working. I'm checking just now and it says that the satellites are not usable, not available, because there's been a bit of a problem. This has been going on since Friday. Friday and it's now, well Thursday New Zealand time, and it is now Tuesday New Zealand time. So this is a major outage. The, the Galileo system isn't working. So the Europeans are now reliant on the Americans and the Russians for their positioning information. Um, it's not a big deal. We've got three levels of redundancy, but it does show just how vulnerable these networks can be. Um, one of the things that scientists have suggested for some time is that eventually the Earth is going to be hit by what's called a coronal mass ejection. Giant, basically a giant solar flare comes up on the sun, hurls a whole lot of particles and crap at the Earth, and it knocks out these satellites, in which case we've got no GPS at all and a lot of our communications infrastructure goes down. But in this case, it's a ground-based problem, apparently at a, a ground station in Italy that's taken out the entire Galileo sat-nav system. Now, I expect that the American and the Russian systems would be equally vulnerable to such a thing. They're all built on basically the same technology, so what can happen to one could happen to the other. And if we got the situation where all three systems were down, well, you know, drones, unless you're flying a, you know, a mini quad with no GPS, um, you're going to be basically out of navigation. You won't have return to home. You won't have the ability to see where your craft is on a map on your cell phone connected to your transmitter. 
None of that stuff will work. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Geofencing won't work. Oh, what's going to happen then? Our airfields will be invaded by drones because geofencing won't keep them out if there's no sat nav, if there's no GPS. But it's just interesting. I thought you might like to know how long the outage has been going on and how serious it would be if it was more than just the European system involved. If we had the other two systems as well, if there was that coronal mass ejection, that CME, if it did take out all those sat-nav birds, we would be going back to compasses and maps. And I wonder, I wonder, have you got an up-to-date map? I don't. My oldest, my newest map's probably a decade old because we use our phones now with Google Earth and, or Google Maps. But all that stuff disappears if the GPS goes out. So maybe it's time to make sure you've got up-to-date maps and a compass. Compasses are handy things. No, not for drawing circles on paper, but for finding which way is north. It's always important to know. So there you go. If you are a drone user, be aware that uh, if you rely on a triple redundancy system, you're down to two now, and if something else goes wrong, you may not have any global positioning. So that's it. Keep an eye. I'll put some links in the description of this video. Go and have a look, because there is a link to the, what is it? Um, I have to look here. The constellation information for the European GNSS Service Centre. So you can go and click on that link and you can see for yourself whether they've come back up or not. There you go. Now, what do you think about the situation? Do you think it's kind of strange that this, this multi-billion dollar satellite system can be taken completely down by one little fault in one little ground station in Italy? Have they thought this through? Um, what would you do if the global positioning system and GLONOS, the, well, GLONOS, the Russian one went down as well. What would we do without GPS these days? Our lives would be quite a bit different because men never ask for directions. So if you're out driving about and the sat nav stops working, you're lost. Yep, you'll just drive around until you run out of fuel and that'll be the end of it because men don't ask directions. That's it. Thank you for another video. Just, I thought, hey, interesting. It affects the drone community. It affects model flies. If you're flying FPV with flight controllers and relying on GPS, you need to know about this and you need to be prepared. What happens if you are 10 miles from, from home in a long range FPV and all GPS systems drop out? Can you find your way back just by watching the ground? Do you know, or do you rely on the home arrow or return to home? I think it probably pays to be a bit more conservative these days given this recent failure. And, and know the area you're flying over so you can find your way back even if your GPS isn't working. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Comments, questions to the usual place. And as I say, links down there are worth looking at, so go and have a look now. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. But tell me why. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, which is why there was no mid-roll ad in this video. There never will be. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, channel support links in the description. Blah, 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 blah. You know their story. Bye for now.